right. Here we are again. Yes, we are. We have a special guest tonight, don't we, Russ? Yes, we do. So, welcome everybody to the second edition of Smoking, Smoking Salad. Salad. So, uh, this is a show about uh, cigar reviews, cigar talk, uh, some whiskey, some politics. So, uh, with that, let's uh, let's get going. So, tonight we are going to be reviewing the Southern Draw Kudzu Cigar. Uh, this is a Nicaraguan blend, and it's actually created by uh, a couple of families that are uh, that are veterans. So yes. some some Navy and some Army veterans that got yes. together for the love of cigars, and they worked with some manufacturers. AJ Fernandez Factory is yes. one that rolls yes. in the bad boys. So expect uh, really good things when we're, we're tasting this thing. So uh, reading up on this thing, it's uh, really intended to be uh, uh, smoked with a robust. Uh, flavors like uh, beers, wines, whiskeys, that's something that's really heavy and scotch. robust. Uh, scotch, yeah. Rum. So, yeah, so I'm looking uh, looking forward to this. Now, the whiskey this evening that we're going to be sampling with is the Woodford Reserve. And it's a special Woodford Reserve that is a barrel purchase by Baseline Liquor here out of Oregon. All right. So well, there we go. So are we, we ready to open this up, or we want to line our cigar first? Well, I want to cut my cigar. All right, let's cut mind. and line our cigar, and I will uh, start opening up this bottle. The uh, bottle of the Woodford Reserve, they went ahead and proofed it down to the normal proofing of 90.4. Uh, sometimes uh, liquor stores, I purchase uh, barrel uh, bottles of barrel purchases, and sometimes they will either do it at barrel proof, or sometimes they'll proof it down a little bit, but I believe that the general manager or the owner of the store went ahead and went ahead and just had this proof down to the normal uh, proof level that Whitford normally bottles the Whitford Reserve at. Uh, he did tell me that he chose a barrel that had a little bit more of a fruity character uh, on the palate and everything, and because of that, it may seem like it's a little bit sweeter. Uh, I know that John is not uh, very keen on a sweeter bourbon, but we'll see what this one has to offer tonight. Yeah, I, we'll probably try this with a couple of different things, whether we're on air or off air. Uh, it remains to be seen. Uh, while Dean is pouring and uh, and Craig and Dean are lighting, um, Dean here is my regular host. We have a uh, guest this week. This is Craig. Uh, we brought Craig on board. Uh, Craig is a uh, very experienced uh, chef. He cooks like no other. Uh, his tasting profile is fantastic. Uh, we really have a lot of respect for uh, what Craig pulls out of, out of whiskey, cigars, everything else. So he's a, uh, a very good taste tester. So we uh, we thought we brought him on and uh, bring him to the show. So welcome to the show, Craig. So Hello. looking forward to seeing what you uh, what you pull out of that. Can I get that so later? so you got do you, you have a lighter? Can I use your lighter there? Put your lighter there. Here. So. Uh, oh, before we, uh, while you guys lighten up, um, last week I, I failed to uh, mention uh, all of this is thanks to the Oregon Cigar Association. Uh, we are a lobbyist uh, and advocate organization fighting for your rights to continue to smoke cigars and premium pipe tobacco in the fine state of Oregon. Uh, as such, uh, my sponsors do have events through the year. I try to post them. Go to OregonCigarAssociation.com. I uh, go to the events page and you'll see any events that are happening in the entire state of Oregon. I've got them posted on my site. So you can always stay apprised if you're out of your local area, if you're traveling someplace, uh, you can always find the events. Uh, two events that are coming up, uh, February 15th, which is uh, this coming Saturday, Selwood Cigars having a uh, Aladino you event. Try this, one. this one is a little earlier. They're going to close the shop a bit early, so it only goes from noon to 5. But they're going to have great deals on the Aladino products. It is a fantastic cigar. Uh, for those of you that have had it, you know what I'm talking about. Uh, this is uh, this is the old Camacho family, the uh, the Aurora family. Uh, Justo, who is the uh, the farmhand, not the farmhand, but he was basically in charge of the farm uh, down at the Camacho fields. He's kind of stepped forward and created might call a, that a horticulturist. Yeah. Okay. Sure. Farmhand horticulturist. Yeah. There you go. Uh, Justo, if you're watching this, uh, my apologies. Um, so that's happening this Saturday. Uh, March 21st, I know a lot of you out there have heard a lot about this movie. It's called Hand Roll. It's a film about cigars. It is a fantastic movie. It uh, basically kind of highlights the cigar industry from uh, from pre... Uh, what are you doing? That's light. 
me is not the one. I gave you a lighter. It worked for me. You tried it. Works fine. Get that back to me. Okay, so now that Craig's going to light his cigar, uh, The Hand Rolled, the movie, it's, it's a great, fantastic movie. We're going to have two showings on March 21st. Uh, it is going to be at Cascade uh, Cigars and Tobacco. And there's two showings, one at uh, 1 o'clock and one at 6 o'clock. So you can come and hang out. Uh, $20 tickets, you can get it at Eventbrite. Uh, you get the tickets there, and it includes a cigar with the movie, so you can enjoy the cigar while you're watching a movie that basically details um, uh, the industry from pre-Cuba uh, embargo all the way through today. So lots of uh, lots of good personalities and uh, famous cigar people that are on this thing, and it's a, it's a great way to spend the afternoon. So um, with that, uh, one more thing. I uh, want to announce, too, that OCA, uh, we're all about creating a premium cigar community. Uh, so yeah, with that in mind, um, I want to talk to you a little bit about memberships. So on my website, OregonCigarAssociation.com, we have silver memberships and gold yeah. memberships, and we also have a super you. duper membership. So you can go to the website, check it out. These membership cards give you discounts at various shops throughout Oregon. So. Enough of the infomercial. Uh, let's get to tasting a cigar. And so, tasting the whiskey. And tasting the whiskey. So, mm. Tell you what, this uh, whiskey take, smells pretty good, John. I'm, uh, getting, I'm getting a nice spice characteristic with it. A good wood spice with a little bit of a cinnamon. Getting some charred, kind of charred oak out of this. Getting charred oak out yeah, of it. Charred oak. See. Some uh, I'm getting more flavor. Yeah, whiskey than I have from the cigar. Did you you're still trying to light that thing? <laughs> <laughs> Does that thing work? Okay, I opened it up and it lit. Yeah. <laughs> Come on, man. <laughs> I'm taking a drink to this one. Yeah, go find another lighter. Uh, so, yeah, so far, uh, easy draw. Um, I get um, on the wrapper itself, on the lips, I, I'm getting uh, kind of a, a cocoa, uh, mm -hmm. a, a bit of a chocolate, but I definitely get some uh, some charred oak, um, some cedar. Oh my gosh. So, uh, uh, really. These two go very well with each other. Yeah. Yes. I'm getting a nice, the cigar helps bring out a nice vanilla. There's a nice spice characteristic to the whiskey from the Woodford. Um, and then it brings out a little bit of oak, and you get a slight little marshmallow with the vanilla. But that spice really does stay on your palate. Ooh, there's something else. It tastes like pizza. It tastes like pizza. Yeah, I'm getting pizza. Mm. Pizza? Pepperoni. Okay. Pepperoni. Okay. Uh, mm. Yeah, definitely get the toasted marshmallow. Yeah. That, uh, yeah. Mm. But it's so, not overly spicy, and it blends. I think it blends very well with this cigar. Yeah. So for those of you out there who you know smoke cigars and maybe you don't drink alcohol, maybe you drink beer, maybe you drink wine, um, pair it up. Um, they're really meant to be paired with other things, not just food, no, and not just uh, conversation. So um, it, they, you can really find some unique and interesting pairings. Yeah. Um, we'll probably cover a few of them that we've discovered over, over the years and just kind of share those with uh, you, the viewers, over time. Um, very good, weeks. A very good non-alcoholic drink is a very nice root beer. So, root beer goes very well with cigar. Sugary. Well, but. Sugary for me. Fine. Sugary for I, believe yeah. I believe you. Yeah. I believe you. I'll be gone for the next two weeks, uh, but come 1st of uh, March, I'll be back on the air. Uh, and we're definitely going to talk about how do you expand your flavor profile. So we're going to teach you a little bit about that, especially if you're new or never really sat down to uh, experience more than just, I ah, generally like the flavor, but you don't really know what it is about the flavor that you like. Uh, we can help you kind of pull those flavors out so you can go to your local tobacconist and say, hey, I like cigars that are leathery or you know peppery or you know those kinds of things. So a couple of weeks we'll be uh, we'll be covering that. Yeah or chocolate or wood spice or all kinds of different flavors that you can pull out. Yeah. Even a, a, a like a, a floral essence to them or 
even some of them will have a, a flavor of salt or sea salt on those. Yeah. I have a very good friend that likes uh, two particular types of cigars because of that flavor profile. <laughs> Here, try it again. All right, try it out. You were just, uh, I'm telling you, <laughs> you're not getting it tonight. That's what she said. Mm. That there should let you know the essence of the cigar right there. Yeah. Mm. I can't get my can reach There, oh. now you can taste it. Look at that. Good. It smells, smells good. Smells yeah, good. you don't know what you're missing, Craig. This is really good, really tasty. Mm. You could go outside and make a fire and maybe light it that way. Yeah. Could do. So. Ooh, oh, I saw something. A spark. I saw a spark. Uh, so for those of you that are whiskey connoisseurs, uh, we have not watered this down. No. Um, I typically like to add a little bit of water to it, but I want to taste it raw from the bottle first, uh, just to experience all of the flavors at the same time. Oh. Uh, so, why do you want to add water to it? Yeah, listen, you could be, you could, this could be on ice. It could be neat uh, in the winter time. I like to warm it up sometimes. Warm and warming it up, is hot a, though. yeah, it's it's amazing yeah. the flavors you pull out at different temperatures. Um, but I add a little bit of water because it opens up the nose a little bit. Uh, it makes those uh, sharper, immediately tasty, the cinnamon, uh, the burn, um, those kind of flavors go subtle and you start to taste things that are underneath. Um, that works for me. Um, find something that will work for you. Uh, if you like to drink it on ice, great. If you like to drink, there's no wrong way to drink a whiskey. I'll tell you what now, what I'm starting to pull out is I'm going to start to pull out a little bit of a wood charcoal essence, like a barbecue almost. Or like a smell of a campfire in the morning when you wake up while you're camping. Well, see, I think I get that from the cigar, and I think that this kind of warms it and rounds it out. Yeah. So, have you added any water? To I you? have not added. I don't think I am going to add any water to this. This is at a ninety point four proof, which, uh, by our standards, isn't that terribly high. Yeah. <laughs> when we normally drink stuff that's one ten to one forty. Yeah. Uh, well, not on what? Um, yeah, but adding water to uh, to whatever you're drinking, uh, it spreads out the phenols, I think, or the oils that are in the uh, alcohol itself. And so you can have a flavor that's very prominent in the beginning, but when you add a little bit of water, you can have that flavor drop out, and then you can have a completely different flavor come forward and add a completely different new experience. Or you can add water, and it can make it go not so good yeah we've, we've definitely had, had that we have so, had that where we're like yeah we buy no, supply let's some more in here we buy to try to full strength first and then add just a little bit of water um if it's still not reducing the sharper flavors just add a little bit more water until you get to a level but remember how much you put in there because if you really liked it best at full flavor yeah then drink it at full flavor yeah uh, if you like it best when it's watered down 50 percent, then do what's right for you but the point is to enjoy it, not to try to get it down your gut. So uh, you never really experience whiskey when they pour it in a shot glass. You can't nose it in a shot glass. Uh, you certainly don't appreciate the taste if you're just slamming it back. Uh, it is meant to be savored and enjoyed all the way from Jim B to George T. Stagg so, yeah. or Pappy Van Winkle. You know, uh, it's, it's what the flavors that you like. Um, there is no bad whiskey. There's whiskeys that I don't like personally. Yeah, but like I don't like Happy Van Winkle. It's, you don't. It's really grainy. We, we had grainy. some this uh, year. Not like alcohol grainy, just like a grassy, weedy, grainy thing, and that's not in my flavor profile. So I like, you know, the I like the more charcoaly, the smoky. That uh, W L Weller we had uh, yeah, yesterday, May Warren was, was yeah. quite good. Mm -hmm. uh, I would like to thank the the people at uh, Baseline Liquor Store. Uh, I don't know if there's any left. Um, I don't know exactly how much they had left. I was going to get a bottle of, I believe that they also had um, a barrel of Buffalo Trace, but that apparently that left very quickly. Um, but yeah. this is quite good. It's different. It does taste different than Woodford Reserve, though. 
Yeah. It's, it, it, it's not a little different. Sweet. Yeah. See, and he was saying it was sweet. With it's sweeter, but it's, not, yeah. Yeah, not as much. I am getting now, the more that I'm drinking it, I am getting a little bit more of the fruit flavored. Uh, I would almost say like a, a light raspberry or maybe a strawberry raspberry combination on it. I think while we're enjoying this a little bit more, uh, I want to do a call out. Uh, this cigar is purchased mm. at Selwood. You can also find this cigar at Mount Hood Cigars up in Sandy. If you're not aware that uh, Sandy has a cigar shop, they do. So go see Chris and Dixie up there. They're wonderful people. It's a great little store. A uh, few call outs for, uh, for uh, friends that are, uh, that are joining us. So uh, Eric's, thank you for joining, sir. Uh, who else? Dan. Dan has also joined us, Dan and joining. Robbie Lynn, all the way from Michigan. Uh oh. So yes, she is more of a. Um, what do you drink, Robbie? Do you drink rum and vodka? I seem to recall having a giant pitcher of. She, she of made just rum and drink. vodka. It was a other? giant bottle. We went to this liquor store, and she was visiting a couple summers ago. Okay. Her and her friend Regina came in and took a picture of this giant vodka bottle. They were like trying to drink it. Oh. So, and the store clerk looked at us and and just kind of like. Typical. Once I told him their shoes from Michigan, he's like, "Oh, yeah, then no surprise." So, so what, cheers. What cigar uh, convention were you at recently, John? Uh, last weekend, I actually uh, well before last week, I was at the Tobacco Professionals Expo, which is TPE twenty. Uh, it is a, uh, a tobacco expo, so it's got more than just cigars. Historically, it was always about cigarettes, babes, uh, and yes. chew, and all that kind of stuff. So. Um, with, the, with the kind of a mixing around of what's going on with the PCA, which used to be IPCBR, uh -huh. um, okay. there yeah. seems to be more tobacconist retailers, uh, manufacturers that are going in and trying their hand at TPE. Um, it was a great event. Uh, definitely met a lot of really good people there. Was there any particular individual that I was uh, greatly pleased that you met there? Yes, uh, definitely call out to uh, Carlito Fuente Jr. Thank you for coming and saying hello to me. Uh, Carlito is a follower of my website and for those of you that are smoking cigars and smoking salads, you know exactly who that is. Uh, he definitely supports our cause. He's uh, definitely thinking about us. Uh, he shares a lot of my uh, a lot of my posts. So Thank you very much, sir. Um, but yes, a lot of media attention there. Um, was there a rather large individual there that you had a nice long conversation with? Large as in tall? Yeah, large as in tall. Well, I, I did sit down. Or large with, as in life. Well, large as in life. Carl Malone uh, was there. He is actually distributing uh, some, some rum. Uh, Dean and I and a couple of friends went down to Dominican Republic. I should have brought, the, bo I, I brought the bottle. Next time, I'm actually going to bring the bottle from the La Aurora factory. I think it was their 110th anniversary uh, for this rum. And they weren't selling it in the United States two years ago. They are now selling it in the United States. Uh, it is not in Oregon yet. Uh, but I did make connections with, with Carl Malone and his team. Uh, you may be seeing it come to Oregon soon. Uh, is a uh, is a Yemenis, uh aged rum, right? Yeah, uh, yeah. As far as I know, uh, I wasn't able to track down who their manufacturer was. Well, somebody uh, in the DR. Yeah, it was it was definitely made in the DR. But as like we could say, the mailman will deliver. So, and for those of y'all with basketball knowledge, y'all know who the mailman is. He was extremely kind. He actually did it really nice. Now I've been, you know, in in other pictures with. Uh, basketball people right and you're standing up next to them so you have to like back away so it's a long shot because they're so much taller than i am I'm oh like, yeah they are i mean their so, their their shoes are almost as big no, as you carl man he set it up right he sat on a couch and he had space to sit right next to him and he wanted you to sit next to him to talk to him and you're at eye to eye level you get your picture taken with him you could chit chat we chit chatted for like 20 minutes just about various stuff i i'm not a basketball player I went and got the picture because you told me to. Uh, but I walked in the booth and I recognized the rum and uh, said, holy cow, you're coming to America with this rum? It's like, it's not coming, it's here. So uh, they gave me a cigar, I lit it up, took my picture with Carl and talked to him for a good 20 minutes. The line was kind of backing up. There was no rush on Carl saying, hey, you know, get off the couch. He's just a super nice laid back guy. Um, unbelievable, that guy. And, and he also announced that He's got some other things coming right now. That Carl Malone cigar, 
It's fantastic. I, it is. It is a very good cigar. You know, the, the celebrity cigars that you get out there, eh, you can take them or leave them. This one was actually really, really yes. good. It is so, a nice cigar. Yeah, I'm not big on celebrity cigars at all. You know this. Yeah. And, but this one, yeah. yeah, hands down, really, really good. Really good, yes. Uh, worth the price to pay for it. He said he's got something else up his sleeve that's coming. He Ooh. didn't disclose what that was. But it's the announcement's Soon to coming. Come. The announcement's coming, uh, I think, sometime in early March. Oh, so there we go. Stay tuned for that. Nice. So, are you so have you, uh, have you had, right, hold on. what is your problem? I mean, you're kind just, of, let me have, just, you know, just, just, kind of, just when you open it, when you, it doesn't light automatically. When you open it up, just push your button there, and it'll light up. Oh, okay. All right. Cool. Maybe you're okay to move now. Yeah. <laughs> You have to push your finger on it. I, I don't know what to tell you. I really don't know what to tell you, folks. So, those of us who do smoke cigars, you have had, I know that I've had it happen, when you only have one lighter, that is the Arkham's razor is when it will not light for you. But apparently he has multiple. And then that's just when it's just bad luck. I had six lighters here. So... All right, let's 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 get to, okay, so tasting. Um, good cigar. I, I recommend it. It's It's got some good flavors of cocoa. Uh, I've got some some, some charred uh, oak, uh, maybe some yeah. cedar tones. A um, little coffee, some spice to it, some uh, some light, uh, it's like a, I can't pick out the spice, but when I retrohale, I can, I can taste it. You know what I would, I, what, how I would categorize this cigar? Um, and I've seen a lot of uh, guys that are, are well, First, more in depth knowledge that are, um, you know, sommeliers and everything with, with alcohols. And um, they talk about that this particular bourbon is like in the mainstay of, of, of a general tasting of what you would get uh, uh, for that you would expect for a bourbon or scotch or uh, any type of a rum or something like that. This cigar to me has a very lot of very good general flavors that are very nice and well balanced for what you would normally taste with a general cigar. I mean, yeah. that's... What do you think, Craig? I don't know. <laughs> I can't seem to get lit. <laughs> well, Craig continues to light his cigar. Uh, let's get to our last subject here. And this is a call out to Smoke Free Oregon. Uh, I picked a fight with them this last week because they are full of lies, 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 and poppycock. On their oh, website, they talk about uh, how nicotine in every product oh, is, is highly addictive and tougher to kick than heroin or cocaine. They then cite a source from a Surgeon General's report that supposedly says this. Now, most of the people that are dragging through the website probably don't even look at the source. Mm. I'm not one of those people. I am completely anal. I read the entire thing. I ran it through a word processor, looked for words like cocaine, looked for words like heroin. I read every paragraph below and, and everything, just trying to read where it says highly addictive, not just addictive, just highly addictive, and as addictive as cocaine or heroin. Um, just for kicks and giggles, mm -hmm. I called the Betty Ford Clinic and wanted to admit myself because I was highly addicted to nicotine. Yeah. They said they don't have that program and, and wondered if I was joking or not. So well, highly addictive, but yet, you know, your your addiction clinics don't seem to have them. You know what really pisses me off? Yeah. Is all the people around my neighborhood who keep breaking into my truck stealing change for cigars. Yeah, they do. They do. They that do just that. pisses me off. Beware of the cigar bandits. So I mean God knows I don't smoke these things because I enjoy it. I'm just doing this and right now I'm just jonesing to get this cigar in my mouth right yeah, away. I, mean, I, I didn't know what I was gonna do uh, today at work because it's been since last Monday that I smoked one that my craving was just so yeah. bad that that's all I could think about. Listen, smoke free organ. You don't have to lie to battle against cigarettes. All right, people know the evils of tobacco in general. They also know better, right? They also know cigarettes are a higher risk profile than vape, than Very much cigars. So. so post studies about that. You know, you don't have to lie to, to make your point. That's that's ridiculous. And quite frankly, you're making everybody else around you enemies when we could be allies because we are a lower risk profile. Now, the way you're kind of coming across is very Puritan in approach. 
Now, I know we're right back into the Roaring Twenties, but we do we really have to go back to speakeasy? And we really have to go into prohibition for you guys to get it? I mean, this is ridiculous. Just, just, I mean, I don't have a problem with you trying to get people off the cigarettes for those people that want to get off the cigarettes, but it's a choice. I know exactly what my risk is on smoking cigars. You guys know what they are, all right? Cigarette smokers, same thing. You have to allow in your brain that some people will actually derive pleasure. We get our pleasure out of the flavors. We're not really smoking this thing for nicotine. We don't ingest it by inhaling it. We get no. trace amounts of nicotine through the tongue, all right? But if it's as addictive as you say, I'd be puffing on this thing 10 times a day, 10 cigars a day, nothing, all right? But the average cigar smoker and smoke-free organ, I can give you a report if you'd like, that shows the average cigar smoker is one and a half per week. That doesn't sound very addictive to me. It doesn't no. sound addictive at all. I mean, I I've think, had the flu for like two weeks. You've had it. I mean, we've gone smoke free for. Oh yeah. Oh no. If I'm sick, I'm not. I'm not. Yeah. 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 And, no. You know, no way. No way. So yeah, it's just it's ridiculous. And the sad thing is, is there just one of many organizations out there who just lie, extract the truth, and yeah, I'm gonna call you out. This show is all about calling out you guys. And oh, be prepared. I'm posting more on your website. In fact, anybody that's watching. Smoke free organ, go to their Facebook page, go to the website, harass them. Ask yeah. them to grow up a little bit and prove what they're saying. Don't just cite a source expecting people not to read it and people who don't read it expect what you just said is a fact. You read my blogs, you go to the blog page at organcigarassociation.com. Anything that I state is fact, I've got a cited source. And in some cases, I'll even highlight the section in the source that I provide for you. I've actually even been to cigar events where the manufacturer has a cold or is not feeling that well, and that individual, whether it be female or male, is not smoking a cigar, yeah. and they don't want to. Yeah, you because know, for one, when you're sick and you're smoking a cigar, it doesn't taste good. The the whole idea of you just trying to make a smoke-free organ is it's a bit it's a bit too harsh. You know, you have to allow people the right to do what they want. It is, it is not your moral imperative to impose your morals on to us. So with that, uh, I think it's uh, it's time. So uh, Craig, you know, we can't we can't leave this show without, without you lighting that thing. Let's get him oh, sure up now. Uh, there we go. Oh, there we go. We'll oh, just pass it over. Look at pass that. the torch oh, to Craig. Poor Craig can light his oh, cigar. Don't, don't breathe on it. Oh, oh, gentle toast it. We want the toast to put first. Oh man, it's been out of it. Close the lid and redo it. Dude, it's so close. Lift the lid. Stick your thumb touch, on the button. No. Really? Okay, look. This look. doesn't work. Folks, this, this, is, this is not hard. There you go. Here, just light a cigar. Any three year old can do it. <laughs> but we don't want them to. So we brought Craig on the show for the tasting. I'm sorry we're out of time. We're not getting Craig's input. He seems to have some challenges here with the lighters. But it's, hey, he uh, made it. Bad. He made it. He did make it here. So, uh, yes. So with that, I bid everybody a, a great night. And uh, what was the saying that you wanted to do? If well, you... we'll do that in the future. But we're going to be coming up with a closing slogan. Other than goodbye? Well, we could always say, if you're going to smoke, may you smoke salad with us. Amen, brother. Good night, everybody. <laughs> You guys are mean. <laughs> All right, ladies.